you planning on picking up a Skylake X CPU? If you are, this video is the one to watch. I'm going to be taking a look at the performance of all three Skylake X chips that are currently available, namely the 7900X, the 7820X and the 7800X as well. All three of these chips have been benchmarked with my usual setup, so they actually have comparison graphs for the Ryzen 1800X and, and all the way down to the 1600 non-X as well. So hopefully this will be an interesting comparison and review. Starting off with the specs for each of these chips, we've got the 7900X, which is a 10 core 20 thread. It's got a base frequency of 3.3 gigahertz with a boost to 4.3. That's only on two of the pre-selected cores though, which you can see in the BIOS, a little star next to them. You also have 13.75 megabytes of L3 cache, and this is a 140 watt TDP chip. Next in line here is the 7820X. That one is an eight core 16 thread CPU, very similar to the Ryzen CPUs. And this one is a 3.6 gigahertz base clock with a 4.3 gigahertz boost on those two pre-selected cores. This one is also 140 watt TDP and is uses 11 megabytes of L3 cache. The baby brother of this bunch, the 7800X, that one is a six core 12 thread processor, has a 3.5 gigahertz base clock with a boost to four gigahertz and is also 140 watt processor and uses 8.25 megabytes of L3 cache. When it comes to pricing for these three chips, you're looking at a fairly hefty sum for all of them. Starting with the 7900K at the time of filming in the UK, you're looking at about 860 pounds for one of those chips. When you look at the eight core 7820X, that one is running for about 520 pounds and the six core 7800X, that one is about 350 pounds. I'd also mention that if you are looking at buying one of these chips and you're comparing to the Ryzen lineup, I'd also make it clear that obviously with the Ryzen CPUs, you can use a B350 motherboard, which is gonna be somewhere between 100 pounds to maybe 150. And obviously you can use X370 as well, which can go up to two, 250, even 300. Whereas most of these X299 motherboards are generally ranging from about 200 to 3, 4 uh, and up. So do bear that one in mind. Cooling is something that I really have to hit hard on here as these chips really are not great for that. Especially the 10 core 17900X, that one using a Be Quiet Silent Loop 360, a 360 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler, that was running at 85 degrees Celsius just with stock settings. When I tried to overclock any of these chips, I did still run into the VRM issues that I spoke about on a live stream, but uh, for reference here, the screenshot from when I was trying to overclock and the temperatures were reported as ridiculously high at over 100 degrees Celsius. So uh, I did have an issue with it throttling itself there. Um, and I did have that issue on the 7800 uh, and the 7820X and the uh, 7900X as well. When it comes to performance, this is where it gets pretty interesting. Let's take a look at the graphs. Starting off with Cinebench, you can see that the 7900X really blows everything out of the water here. The 7820X is a little bit better than the 6900K and a little bit better than the 1800X and the 7800X does beat out the 1600X and 1600 in this regard too. When it comes to ASUS RealBench, again, the 7900X, which is obviously a significantly higher core count than any other chips I have here, does again blow everything out of the water, with again the Intel chips just running a little bit faster than their AMD counterparts. When you take a look at 3 d Mark uh, Firestrike, this is the standard 1080p run, you're looking at, again, fairly respectable results. You're actually looking at a fairly close tie between the 7820X and the 1800X here, with an identical tie with the 7900K, and when it comes to GTA 5, you can see that Intel definitely does a better job overall at uh, GTA 5 gaming than with uh, you know Ryzen. But when you take a look at Dirt Rally, this is where it gets interesting. There really isn't a massive gap here between any of the chips, and it's fairly standardized, at least with the, the current testing that I have done. Of course, something to note with these chips is that they're all significantly more expensive than their Ryzen counterparts. So if you are planning on picking one up, then do take a look at the Ryzen chips in terms of value for money too. As expected, the 7900K is the fastest chip on the block, at least at the moment anyway. Of course, Threadripper is just around the corner. I'll be interested to see how that performs. Even when you compare the 8 core and the 6 cores together, you know, the, the 1800X and the 7820X and the 7800K, uh, 7800X and the 80, uh, 1600X, uh, both of those chips, the Intel ones, are still faster, but just because of their single threaded performance advantage, which obviously then pushes up the multi-threaded score a little bit too. In gaming results, I didn't see a massive difference. Of course, GTA 5 is a bit of an Intel heavy title anyway, but especially looking at something like Dirt Rally and in things like 3D Mark Firestrike, there wasn't a massive 
massive difference there, so I'm quite impressed. So of course, if you're after the best performance you can possibly get, right now Intel is the better choice. If, however, you want your best value for money possible, then it's actually kind of important to go with Ryzen right now. I would mention that actually the 1700X, the eight core, I think 3.4 gigahertz base, uh, eight core CPU, that one is actually 20 pounds cheaper than the seven, six core 7800X right now. Now, of course, in terms of straight up gaming results, sure, the 1700X might not be quite as good in some titles, thanks to the 7800X is just uh, overall slightly better single threaded performance but when it comes to a sheer powerhouse of a CPU and if you're buying this sort of platform you're probably not just gaming then you know an 8 core is going to be significantly better for you than a 6 core so that is something to, to bear in mind. Now I have gone into it more detail on some of the other extra features of X299 in the sort of X299 explain video especially talking about the new V-RAID header which is uh, a little bit of a shifty thing to do and a few of the other uh, changes and differences on X299 so feel free to take a look at that video for more of an explanation on the uh, you know the launch and all that sort of stuff but otherwise that's pretty much it. If you enjoyed the video and want to check out any of these CPUs I'll leave links to them in the description down below and if you want to see any more feel free to check out the videos that are going to be over here for you. Otherwise, please do subscribe if you enjoy the video and check out the Amazon and Overclockers UK affiliate links in the links in the description down below because they genuinely help me out and they continue to help me make these videos on a Monday, Wednesday and Friday basis. So if you could do that, that'd be fantastic. And otherwise, uh, yeah, I guess that's kind of it. Hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to check out some of the other videos that are over there. And otherwise, we'll see you all in the next video.